And so what I'm going to do now is, because this is a smaller cylinder, I'm going to reduce the number of spans from 16 to 8. And I do that because I don't, or first off, don't need that many spans to describe this size of a cylinder. And secondly, it will make it much easier to attach this piece uh, to this piece over here. So we basically have to start by doing something kind of similar to what we did before. Uh, I'm going to drag these down here. And then I'm going to cut in a couple of edge loops. And actually I want to make sure that this loop is flat. So I'm just going to scale it down until it's relatively flat like this. And drag it down, line it up move this down a little bit. Okay. I'll cut one in here to match up with that one. And right up here to meet the top. Actually, I don't think I need this one. I think this is going to work. Okay, and now I'm just going to begin cutting this in. So I'm just going to start by cutting this diamond shape in here. Here's what the wireframe looks like. And of course I've got this connection point right here. So let's just add a vertice. So I'm just going to use the split edge tool and hit enter. And although I haven't drawn any edges, I have created that vertice here. So I'm going to do the same thing on these other three edges. And now what I'm going to do is grab that edge and drag it over. Actually, before I do that, let me go into the cylinder. I'm going to delete the end and line up these vertices as close as I can. It's really important for me not to move these vertices around like this, because as soon as I do that, I've lost my cylindrical shape. So I'm only moving it along that horizontal axis here. Okay. But of course, some edges do have to move, and so those are going to be the ones on the surface here. So what I'm going to do is I've selected this vertice, and I'm going to hold down V and snap it to this vertice here. And I'll do that same thing with all these. So remember, V is for snapping to points. C is for snapping to curves. X is for snapping to the grid. OK, cool. So now I know that this cylinder is touching that perfectly. And now I just need to get rid of these faces. This will be the inside part. And now I can connect them. And I'll use my hotkey for this tool here to do that. So just to demonstrate what this would look like if I didn't do any more cutting, if I didn't add this type of geometry, I'll show you what this would turn into. So it's actually not that hideous, but if you look at the geometry closely, let's do this instead. Um, I'm going to do a polygon smooth, which is similar to the sub-D preview, but it's a permanent change to the geometry itself. So if we go to Mesh, Smooth, this is doing sort of the same thing that I was doing before. But you can see what's happening with the geometry. Um, it's trying to compensate as best it can. But in order to do that, it has to create a bunch of triangles, and or not triangles, but diamond shapes. And the connection isn't very clean. You notice how there's no 
real consistent highlight happening. Uh, let's just use a blend real quick. If you use this button here, you put a shiny shader on here. Um, it's got all sort of artifacting going on here, and look at the pattern that happens. Whereas over here, it's a nice, clean, smooth transition. And you can see that in the geometry. So I'm going to undo this real quick and get back to where I was. And let's go ahead and make this right. So we can add an edge loop here. That's easy. And then we'll have to add our own through here. So I'm just going to connect these vertices points. And now I'm going to begin cutting in a ring to go around. Once I do that, I can get rid of these two edges. I'll do the same thing down here. And over here. And all the way around. Oops. And get rid of these. Okay, and we're almost good, but what I'd like to do is make sure that this is consistent distance. Uh, as it is, this will probably look okay, but it's just going to be a little bit cleaner if we go ahead and bring this in a little bit. So I'm using this tool right here, which I found out doesn't really work very well on a shelf button, but preferably should be down on a hotkey. Just quickly changes the uh, pivot point of that vertice and goes to the scale tool right away. There we go. So by moving these vertices, I am losing a little bit of the cylindrical nature of this curve going around, but not a significant amount. I like to keep things even whenever I can, so I'm just going to bring that up. And let's just throw an edge loop up here. And give this a shot. Let's put a loop here to keep that in place. And actually, let's just go ahead and grab these faces. Extrude them in. Oops. And we've got a pretty clean looking connection here. There's a little bit of lumpiness, but I'm not too concerned about that. Okay. So like I'd said before, we'd already modeled this piece. Let's just go ahead and duplicate that and bring it up. One thing I'm not going to duplicate, well, I will duplicate it, but I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So I'm going to grab the group. And by the way, uh, to select the group quickly, you can always just grab it in the outliner. Or you can select any child of the group. It's called the child and the parent. So you can grab a child and then use the up arrow on your keyboard and it'll automatically move up in the hierarchy to the next level up. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this group. When you duplicate a group, it duplicates everything within the group because every anything that's underneath the uh, master uh, hierarchical node here is going to be duplicated. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. Let's try negative 90. Go the other way. And let's get this in position. Okay, so I want to scale this down, but I don't really want to scale the bolt, because the bolt is the same size, or should be the same size. The same tool should open both of these. So let's just grab this bolt and take it out of the group. And there's two ways we can do that. You can use Shift P or capital P. That's uh, the shortcut for unparenting. It'll just take whatever you have and take it out of the group. 
or you could actually grab it with the middle mouse button and drag it out of the group and preferably just placing it somewhere in between these two like that. Now you can parent uh, pretty much anything to anything. So I could take this back in or I could actually parent it to another piece of geometry and then that geometry becomes a container uh, sort of in a way. But that's sort of a dangerous thing. It can lead to a lot of confusion so I would try to avoid that. Okay, now I can grab this group and I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to constrain my scale to just the two axes of y and x. Let's get this lined up. Oops. I'll put that back in the group now. And I realize I can just scale this object down. Okay, so the uh, surface area here is a little bit less than it is here, so we'll have to make some changes to this geometry. It shouldn't be too hard. I'm just going to hide everything else really quickly. And uh, I'm going to paint a selection of these faces in the middle and then just use the shift period hotkey to expand the selection out to where I want it to be. I'll deselect these faces here. And I actually want to include this face in the selection so I'm going to expand one more time and then just deselect these faces again. Although it seems like extra work, sometimes it really is the fastest way because it's actually faster than going around and selecting all these things individually. Okay, so I'm just going to scale this thing up. Again, I'm going to constrain to the two axes. Okay, so I lied. I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. There we go. Is it longer too? It looks a little bit longer. And this whole piece feels kind of long to me now, so yeah, it's very long. <laughs> so let's shorten this thing up. I don't want to just scale the whole thing because then it's going to look really, really flat. Instead, I'm going to grab all the vertices in the back and slide them towards the front. Now we'll include this selection here. Just bring that up. And let's bring this forward. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because if you look at our, our shape here, it's really softening out now because of the distance that's been created between this edge and this edge. So I'm just going to bring this back forward and maybe add an extra edge loop right here. Bingo. Still too big. Okay. Good enough. So let me group these. They're already in a group, so I'm just going to line it up from the top view now. And basically just place it right on there. And it looks like I can bring this in a little bit. pretty short. Okay. So that was a fair amount of work. 
and we actually have to do it again because this is a symmetrical object. But the great thing about Maya, like I was saying before, is that you can duplicate things from one side to the other. So we really only have to do that work once. So I'll show you how to get that going. Right now this cylinder is mostly symmetrical. I'm just going to delete half of these faces. Like that. And now I'm going to make a selection up there. Actually I'm going to marquee select this whole top part. So I'm holding down shift and control to add to my selection. And I'm just, I'm just going to tear it off real quick. So now these are separate. I'm going to change the pivot point to the middle. So I held down D, snapping the point. And it's just have to do a, a control D to duplicate. Bring it over into negative one. And combine this. Uh, that's interesting. So this is yet another fun little bug that Maya has. It's turned a couple of the faces transparent. So we just need to reassign the shader, which is right up there. That's the default shader. And uh, just have to line up this vertice, which I had moved on the other side. And now I can combine this together. And now we just need to duplicate this. It's already in a group. So I can duplicate it and I can scale it into the negative. Or I can just rotate this piece, which I think I might do. But first I'm just going to freeze my transformations on that object. Okay, duplicate it. And this time I need to swing it around 180 degrees. There we go. So our fire hydrant is quickly taking shape.